Hey, I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic Thursday. This is the Breakdown Live, this show where we kind of break down some of the weirdest news, different things we find you may not have heard about. Chat, have some fun, and enjoy ourselves. If you're new here, do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up. As we build this new channel, the new show, really appreciate everybody's support. And thank you for those subscribes and likes. They really do help. And hopefully we can help you find out some news that you may not have known before. So we're going to hit post on social media real quick and check this all out. I see people already coming in. The notifications may have gone er live early this today. Hello, Daniel. It's good to have you here. Now, one thing I've noticed about YouTube chat, which is, I don't think I've noticed it before, at the top of the live chat, there's a setting. It will say something like typically top chat which is a filter chat that doesn't show you all the chat messages. If you switch that over to live chat at the very top of your chat message, I'm not sure how to do it on mobile. You can do it on desktop that way and you can see all the live chats. But Chris, Tom, Daniel, good to have you all here. Hopefully our internet holds up. Uh, now this may be the last live show. I may fit in one more live show before the move, before we're in the new studio. But last week, I thanks for uh, hanging in here with me as we were gone. I drove all the way from Texas to Michigan during this virus time and back again in seven days. It was quite the experience. Very interesting road trip. I'm not sure if you saw the video. I posted it here on the channel if you want to check that out. But I was able to see dramatic differences. It's very interesting seeing the difference between like Oklahoma and Missouri versus Illinois and Michigan. Now here in Texas, people have been saying that Texas is opening up way too fast, not nearly as concerned as we should be about the virus. It was interesting to see that, like Missouri, for example, and Oklahoma, way more open, way more back to normal than I've ever seen before it, um, compared to Texas, uh, which was interesting to me because I heard for so long that, you know, Texas is not taking this seriously. We're rushing to reopen, uh, all that kind of stuff. And I was very um, interested to see that uh, Missouri, Oklahoma, far more open than Texas. Illinois, Michigan, though, way more locked down than Texas. It was very interesting to see the different dynamics there. Maybe we can talk about that a little bit later. But we do have many other topics to talk about, including a simple test, maybe, to determine if you're a good person or a bad person. I want to know, A, what do you think of the test? And B, how do you fall on the test? So let me know. Tom, Bill, Richard, good to have you here. It's good to hear everybody's been asking for me. Uh, Richard, hello from Iowa. So a quick update on the show. Was up in Michigan looking at the new home uh, and the work getting done on it. The new studio, I'm very excited. Maybe late June, if all goes well, we'll be ready. Uh, the people are doing their work there. Once they're done, I got to get in there and put the sound paneling up and do different things. But I'm very interesting to see, um, to get that going. Once that happens, once we're moved in, uh, about two weeks from now we move and they're going to take another maybe two weeks to get everything ready, hopefully, maybe less, uh, that then we're going to get down to a regular schedule. My goal is to have regular um, live shows, maybe once, twice a week, and regular breakdown pre-record shows like we, the one we did yesterday. And by the way, thank you so much. In the last, uh, since we switched over this to be the primary channel, Yesterday video was the most successful video in 24 hours, 600 some views, a lot of new subscribers. Thank you so much everybody who's been subscribing and joining us. Um, so hang in here, a lot of changes coming. We're gonna slowly grow all this and keep developing and go from there. Uh, Chris asked, what happened to all the review boxes back here? All the devices, everything, I still own them. It's all boxed up, about half my home maybe Two thirds of the house are all packed up, ready for the move. Actually, in the trip up last week, we took a lot of stuff up, left it up there in Michigan. So uh, yeah, it's very barren in here, probably a little bit more echoey than normal. Uh, the new YouTube studio, I'm very excited about. This room was never a very good room to be a YouTube studio. and didn't really expect it to become one when I bought this home. Hardwood floors, big tall ceilings, that kind of stuff. The new one is gonna be much more um, built for audio and video and that kind of stuff. So I'm very excited about that. But when it comes to the stuff behind here, I kept, I mean, a lot of the stuff I still have, 
It's just in boxes waiting for the movers to haul it up to Michigan right now. Bill says his local casino reopened. So that's great to hear. So let's kind of take a look at a few things, but I have a question for you. Anybody here a puzzle person? As we wait for more people to come in, I know how this works. It takes a little while for all the live chat to catch up and people to see the notifications. But Heinz Ketchup has come out with a puzzle. It's a 570 piece puzzle that's nothing but the shade of red. This comes from um, Delish, the website. This was announced and I wanna know, would you buy a Heinz puzzle that is nothing but a solid piece of red? This seems like the ultimate difficult puzzle because all the pieces are different, but the image on them are all the same. So let me know, would you actually buy that? Is that something you are interested in? Um, Chris, a couple of Chris is in here. Christopher, Bill, good to have you here. Um, Kosher is in LA. A couple of casinos were rolling out, Bill says. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I saw that uh, in Oklahoma especially. Saw quite a few casinos had reopened. And it's very interesting. Feels like things are kind of getting back to normal. It's kind of weird. But then I was in Illinois, Michigan, and things are definitely not normal. Very locked down there still and more. Richard says, on the news front, last Friday, the barbershop opened. Now he he needs a haircut. Yeah, I was actually um, in Michigan when Indiana reopened, and apparently there was a backup of cars going out of state um, to get haircuts. And it brought up a question to me, you know, some states like Michigan and Illinois are like, we can't open up, we don't want people traveling. But when they're bordering states, like in Illinois, Missouri, I was hearing people in Missouri talk about how people from Illinois are coming over the border. Are you actually encouraging people to travel more? Are we seeing people travel to um, Indiana, Missouri, and other areas, which they can go get a haircut, they can go eat dinner, whatever, and then traveling back into places like Michigan. So instead of maybe going down the corner and getting your haircut there, you're driving hours maybe to go get a haircut, go get to uh, a dinner or whatever it may be. In Michigan, for example, the UP and part of the Traverse City area reopened, but the governor's keeping the southern side of the state locked down. Immediately, what happened? All the hotels in the UP and Traverse City area booked up. So I'd love to know what your thoughts are on that. Do you think that that's wise? Should we try to all roll out the same pace um, to discourage that kind of behavior? or not, love to hear from you. But all right, so we are filling up. It's good to see so many people here. Billy, welcome, good to have you here. So I, one more story before we get into our shopping cart theory. I thought this one was interesting. A boy five years old got in a fight with his mother over wanting to buy a Lamborghini. So he stole his mother's car, or took it, whatever you wanna call it, and um, drove two miles on the road, got on the highway before police pulled him over at five years old for driving his mother's car and uh, attempting to go to California in order to buy a Lamborghini. I thought that was a little bit interesting. That comes from the, um, the mirror. And I wanna know, when you were five years old, would you ever dream of taking your parents' car and going for a road trip? I have elementary age kids and they better not do that. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd love to know. I thought that was kind of interesting. Apparently, he only had a few dollars on him. I'm not sure he quite understood the cost of a Lamborghini, but that's what it is. Um, but let me know what your thoughts are here. We'll wait. We're filling up quick. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up. It really does help us, and we'll go from there. All right. Now, here is the big question of the day. The, this is actually a test I have had family members tell me about, but this week, for some reason, this particular test um, has made it public. It appeared on 4chan, it was shared on social media, and a lot of news places have picked it up. But have you ever heard of the shopping cart theory test? And the shopping cart theory test is this idea that you can get a good idea of who's a good person and who's a bad person based on if they return their shopping carts to the um, cart corral at the, end of the, at the end of their shopping. So I have a question for you. 
Are you, two questions. First of all, are you somebody who returns their shopping carts to the cart corral at the end of the um, shopping trip after you unload your car? You just leave it by your car and drive away? Um, and do you think that there's a, a connection there between behaviors like taking the time, go all your way to put the shopping cart back to where it's supposed to be or just leaving it anywhere? Do you think that there's any um, truth to that? So let me know. My mom made it clear that we put the shopping carts back. And when I was a kid, as soon as I was old enough to push it, I was my job to return the shopping cart after we unloaded the groceries. So I want to know, and it's just something I've always done since then. You know, it's one of those things. The parents set the example. And in this case, it kind of stuck into my adult life. So I'd love to know what you think. CJ says he always puts the shopping cart back. Um... Ed says it puts it back always. Oh, uh, too. Richard, we'll definitely get to that story here in a little bit. Daniel says, I returned the car, and yes, it tells you a lot about the person. Daniel, why does it tell you a lot about the person? What about a shopping cart being returned to the car corral tells you a lot about the person? Love to hear your thought, your feedback on that. Um, but keep the, the feedback coming. I'd love to hear from you. And if you return or you don't return, let me know. If you don't return, why don't you? Now, I will say I probably am not 100% on that. There probably has been times where there is probably like pouring rain and I may just leave the shopping cart because I'm getting, the ha I'm getting in my car. There's a thunderstorm happening. I think I've had that happen. Where there's a lot of lightning, a lot of thunder, high wind and rain. I was like, I'm getting out of here. So uh, let me know. Uh, Chris says he does return carts um, the de to the designated area. But do you agree with the idea that it shows something about a person's personality if they return it or not? Let me know. All right. A couple other notes here um, a little bit. I love some feedback once we get off this topic about what you think of the show. My goal here, especially with the pre-recorded ones, and I'd love to know your thoughts, is about covering topics that most people do not talk about in a lot of the news. Maybe um, in our old show, we broke down one particular kind of theme, but this one be more about bringing you news that you may not have heard, you know, focusing on that idea. So let me know what you think of that idea. I'd love to hear it from you. My car got my car got scratched by a shopping cart a few months ago. Yeah, you know, that's one of the things that a lot of people don't think about. You got these carts around, a big breeze comes, and the shopping cart takes off and slams into a car, scratches up a car. You know, no one ever likes that. You know, it's no matter if you have a new car or old car, no one likes coming out of their out of the grocery store and finding their car all scratched up because a cart smashed into it, or worst case, maybe a big dent in the side of the car with that. Deborah says it depends, but you have a good reason. You suffer from a disease that can cause pain, and if you're in a lot of pain, you won't. Yeah, I mean, if you have a physical disability, you know, for instance, the people who uh, take those riding shopping carts, and you see them often parked over by handicap parking spots, I'm not expecting them to take those back. So I do think, you, you know, with all things you need to use, a little bit of judgment. You know, sometimes, I always say this, we're often in a rush to judge people. And sometimes there may be a side of the story that you don't know about. Um, for example, you may see somebody get out of a car in a handicap spot who may not seem like they're all that dis, um, disabled, but there may be a reason. Uh, I know somebody, um, for example, that suffers from a rare disease where they burn almost instantly. They always have to wear long sleeves, big hats, all kinds of stuff. Um, and they have a handicap sticker, so they don't have to walk through a parking lot as far to do that. And even with the big hats and the gloves and the sunscreen, they can still get burned um, right through their clothes. So it's kind of one of those things. You can't always just say, hey, you look like you're physically able. You shouldn't be parking in the handicap spot because you may not know the situation. You may not have all the details. And that's definitely something to remember. All right, before we kind of keep moving into the next story, I wanted to talk to you about the show. 
leave me feedback. I really would love to, your feedback. I am looking at maybe creating an email account. Um, of course, if you have Twitter, do me a favor, follow me on Twitter. If you ever find any stories or have a topic you want me to talk about, feel free to send me a tweet, send me an email once I post that. We'll try to get that put together. Love to hear from you and have that. And that way too, maybe we can have some two-way communication in some of these videos too. Uh, NYC, good to have you here. We just started recently, so you really haven't missed much. So keep um, good to have you here. But yeah, so many people. So a few things on the YouTube channel, very steady, good growth. Had one of our best days yesterday in the channel. You know, it's kind of one of those things, a lot of people with YouTube channels, they take a lot of grinding. So we're gonna definitely put a lot of effort in this. We're gonna be grinding it for a while to grow it. So I really appreciate everybody's support. It means a lot to me. And we're gonna keep kind of developing it. My goal here is to every time we do a video, be a little bit better than the last time we did a video. You know, keep covering better topics. So let me know, what do you think of the breakdown? What do you think of the topics we've been talking about? What do you think about the different um, formats we're doing here? Uh, what did you think of the, the cross country road trip video last week? That was something completely different. I don't think I've ever really done anything like that. I'd love to hear from you. And so we, we did the, uh, are you a good person test? Here's a big question for you of the day. Are you drinking more alcohol during the lockdown? A court reports um, U.S. alcohol beverage sales rose 55% in the week ending March 21st. As lockdowns um, rolled out, beer sales were up 24% and um, it was 75% increase in comparison to the same period a year ago. That's pretty impressive. You know, I always love to run a business that says that you um, see a 75% increase. The market research firm also reported that online alcohol sales for delivery jumped 243%. So question for everybody, I am not a huge alcohol drinker. I do drink some wine, not a huge beer drinker. Um, I don't think I've ever ordered alcohol online. I didn't really even think that was a thing. So have you A, ever ordered that? And B, have you noticed yourself drinking more as, excuse me, uh, Pre-mixed cocktails were up 75%. Did not quite read that correctly. Ed uh, says he has other vices. One of my other, my main vice is caffeine. I drink way too much Coke. That's probably my main thing. Um, Bill says he is definitely drinking more. NYC says, according to eat this, not that, they say drinking less alcohol and drinking more water. Been sticking to water. Definitely, you know, one of the big things I often, we talked about the beer gut, but the beer gut's definitely something very real. And drinking water is far better for you. Definitely. A lot of people say they don't drink alcohol. Uh, you know, I'm not much of an alcohol drinker. Do sometimes enjoy a nice glass of wine at the end of the day or with a nice meal. But that's pretty much it. I can't remember the last time I ever had beer, to be honest with you. Definitely have not bought beer in a decade or more. So let me know though if it surprises you that that's happening. Would I sign an original Roku for fan? I think we may be able to do that, John. But here's the problem. I am moving right now. If you would, for instance, ship it to me, it may not get here before I'm moving. John, grab me in June when I'm up in Michigan, and I'll give you a, an address you can mail that to, and I'll be happy to sign it and return it to you. Uh, but you got to grab me in, in June, because I would hate for you to mail it here, it get delayed, miss me, and then who knows what happens to it. So I don't want you to lose your device, so hold on to it, grab me in June, and I'll be happy to do that. Deborah says she's been drinking more water and lemonade. My daughter has been in an incredibly big lemonade. So I think the two of you are a fan recently. I think the two of you would get along. And out about Florida, but it's definitely been hot here in Texas this week. It's been in the 90s pretty much every day. Really crazy. 
Um, but we're going back to normal temps, just as like the Midwest is going to be going into a higher than normal temp range. So very interesting. So I have a question for you. During the age of the virus, we'll call it, a lot has been happening. And one of the things that people have really been pointing for, pointing to, and something that I actually talked about, if you watch one of the very first live streams we did on this channel, I talked about public transportation being a potential spot where this may be spread. While now, according to Reuters, it turns out that, you know, people are becoming increasingly afraid of public transportation um, as a place where maybe diseases can spread. Plus, it's very hard to have social distancing when you're in a tight bus or a tight subway, for example. But we're increasingly seeing public transportation rates drop in large cities and small. Um, similar dynamics have been playing around the world. In China, where transportation uh, ridership in large cities remains down about 35% two months after it. And you think about China and other areas, public transportation is far more popular than here in the United States. So, you know, one of the things I thought was really interesting, and I wanted everybody's opinion about this, was this idea that, you know, what, 10 years ago, we really started this, seeing this pick up. About a year ago, I think it peaked. This idea that you don't need a car, just take public transportation or Uber and that kind of stuff. Increasingly, though, we're seeing people ditch public transportation with, with everything happening in this current pandemic and switching over to um, driving themselves. Uh, and there's been even rumors that maybe some states that were hit last were partially because they don't rely quite as much on public transportation. So let me know, would you, are you somebody who is going to be using public transportation less or would, will this not phase you and you're going to continue to use it? I'd love to know. Uh, but it's a very interesting story from Reuters about how public transportation has been plummeting in recent years and to the point where some are concerned um, that they will run out of money because people aren't spending to ride on them and they're calling for a $33 billion federal support program in the addition to the $25 billion that were already granted to uh, help public transportation. So let me know. Bill says he's been frozen mudslide, Olive Garden are their favorite. Um, they use ice cream instead of cream at, um, I think it's Chili's he was saying. But trying to drink a lot more water. I think everybody's trying to be a little bit more healthy right now with everything happening, a little bit more aware, trying to be a little bit more healthy. Chris says he feels safe on public transportation over the last couple of months. I've, I've had a whole bus himself. Well, here's a question to you, Chris. As things get back to normal, as bus re, um, ridership returns to normal, would you still feel safe? Or are you going to be a little concerned when people are sitting on top of you again? NYC says he's not returning to New York City until a vaccine. I already dealt with um, anxiety, don't need more. You know, it's definitely a thing. We talked about, I think it was a last live show, the growing trend of people taking one-way trips out of New York, a lot of people moving from large cities back into suburbs to get away from what turned into hotbeds during this pandemic. Um, Ed says, the few times I've used public transportation, they make me where, um, made me never want to do it again. Why is that, Ed? What about it did you not want to do? Um, Chris says he will still feel safe even after ridership returns to normal where he is. So yeah, so I don't think it's going to completely evaporate. The question is, will it still maintain enough of a ridership base to be able to effectively um, sustain itself? You know, Amtrak, for example, has a few routes that can do that. The, I think it's the Boston, New York, Washington, D.C. corridor is probably the only main very profitable route, definitely very profitable. I think once I heard it was the only profitable route compared to a lot of smaller routes out there where it's really not that profitable for Amtrak. Could we see subways and buses fall, start falling into that? Will cities and federal governments be willing to put enough money into it to support it and keep it successful? We'll have to wait and see what happens. Bill says in Austin, Texas, you have to wear a mask if you want to ride the Capitol Metro and sit every other seat. I've definitely seen that, you know, a lot of uh, places. I think Philadelphia is also requiring you to wear a mask. You know, it's interesting. Um, you know, I know that masks are a hot 
topic right now. Um, I've definitely been wearing a mask mostly because I want people to feel comfortable around me in grocery stores. I thought it was interesting. In Texas, I would say about 50% to 60% of people in stores are wearing masks, at least when I go to a Walmart. Target seems like almost no one wears masks. I don't know if it's the kind of people who go to Target or what exactly, but I find only about 10% of people are wearing masks in Target right now <laughs> compared to maybe 50, 60% in Walmart. Now, I will say a month ago, masks are not mandatory in Texas, but a month ago, I will say the percentage of people wearing masks was higher. And I think what's happening is people, as time goes on, more and more people are removing the mask. Flip this around, go to Oklahoma, go to Missouri, almost no one was wearing a mask. I'll say 10% or less. And even you know, here in Texas, you go to a restaurant and everyone's wearing a mask. At least all the staff are wearing masks. If you go in there for pickup or anything. And some restaurants are now open dining area here in Texas. Um, but in Oklahoma went into a fast food joint. We're going to use the bathroom, they get food. They had hand sanitizer everywhere. But none of the staff were wearing masks. One of the staff of the cash register had a mask, but it was aware around her neck. Um, and that was it. Did not wear a mask. Missouri, same thing. Flip it around, you go to Illinois and Michigan where masks are mandatory. And I would say 60 to 80%, depending on the store, of people were wearing masks. So it definitely seems to be that the vast majority of people who are wearing masks right now, or in states that require people to wear masks, the vast majority of people are. In states where people are not required, most people aren't, or maybe 50-50, depending on where you hit it at best. It'll be interesting. But let me know, what are your thoughts on masks? Uh, I was at a Target a couple weeks ago. Uh, actually, I would say it was probably early April now. And I was at one of the full service lanes. I There was a lady way past, past the cash register lady at the uh, where you pay. And I was at the back of the line putting my stuff up on the line. And the cash register um, uh, person around the cash register asked me to step back. I was like, I, I'm pretty sure I'm over six feet away. But, you know, with, I kind of looked up at the lady at the cash register or uh, by the cash register. She had backed away. She was clearly uncomfortable, you know, gloves, face mask, everything. It's like, well, I'm not here to make you uncomfortable. Yeah, I'm going to back away. And I think it's a little bit of that with face masks for me too. It's like, I know some people are look at you like you're crazy if you wear them. Some people think you're crazy if you're not wearing them. Um, but to me, you know, if it makes people comfortable, I'll be happy to wear them. So Tom says 95% of people in South Cal Southern California are wearing them. Is it mandatory in Southern California? Let me know. I will say it's interesting, all businesses in Illinois have signs saying it's mandatory, but like we went into a gas station and was wearing my mask, and a couple came in and they immediately realized, oh, we're not wearing a mask, and they turned around and went back. And the wife even said something to the husband about it. And the, ca the guy at the um, cash register was like, ah, oh, don't worry about it, you can use the bathroom without a mask. So they weren't really enforcing it, at least not at that truck stop. Deborah says, and where she is, only about 20% of people were wearing masks and about 50% of the employees. Increasingly, I find that most stores are requiring it. Like here, Chick-fil-A is requiring it. Um, actually, I ordered some food delivery. We got back in town, and both my wife were all like, mm, after two and a half days in the car, we're not cooking. We ordered from Waiter, which is a food delivery service similar, similar to Uber Eats in this area. And they actually had face masks with the waiter logo printed on it, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, but I find it very interesting. You know, who doesn't, who doesn't. NYC says not only does he wear a mask, uh, he also wears glove, hat, and sunglasses. If I had a hazmat suit, I would wear it too. You know, I find it interesting. You know, one of the only thing I worry a little bit about, and I want to I want to to hear from you if you've seen this too if you worry about this i worry a little bit that when people wear the mask or wear the gloves and all that kind of stuff is they feel a little bit too safe for example i was in walmart and saw a lady all face mask and everything gloves um and putting her hands all over her face taking the mask off touching her face putting the mask back on with gloves and that's no more safe than if you just did it without the gloves on so I do wonder sometimes if a lot of people don't understand the proper usage of gloves and masks, and because of that, maybe have a slight sense of safety. You know, it feels like we need a series of PSAs. Um, 
about proper ways to wear gloves, proper ways to wear face masks to actually make them effective. Uh, for example, I was in Walmart and somebody walked up to an employee, pulled down their mask, talked to the employee within six feet, got right on top of the employee, turned around and walked away. And as they walked away, they put their face mask back on. I was like, okay, that's not exactly how this works. <laughs> um, so while there's a lot of people, like NYC says he definitely uh, does not touch his face, always washes his hands and more. Um, and there's, there's definitely people who do it correctly. On the flip side, there's definitely people who are not doing it correctly. So I find that very interesting. How do you fall on this? What do you think of that? Leave me a comment, let me know. But do you think we need to have some PSAs, not about why you should wear a mask, but also about how to properly wear the masks and more. Bill says uh, he ordered a mask with the USS uh, Yellowstone uh, AD-41 on it, which was the ship I was stationed on. That's great, Bill. You know, I definitely find it's, you know, it's the new thing right now, designer masks and masks with different things, you know, sports teams and more. Um, you know, it's just interesting to see that trend that, hey, you know, Disney, we talked about that. Disney started launching a line of Disney themed masks with Disney characters and more. So here's another one. The mask where it's actually a picture of your face and they print it on there so you kind of look like yourself. Anybody interested in getting that? Um, we do need a hand washing PSA. Maybe get um, guy first who does uh, music to do it. Okay. Uh, did I see the woman who was shopping in Giant Bubble? I did not see that, but I've definitely seen a lot of interesting um, get ups to help protect people. Um, Bill, somebody's asking you where you ordered that. Leave us a comment. Let us know where you ordered that. Uh, Tom says his local mayor announced on Wednesday now requiring face masks for all outdoor activities. A little, you know, that may be a little bit much. For example, when I say out here, I see a lot of people walking by yourself wearing masks. And I was like, I don't know if that's maybe the best. You know, going for runs with a mask on may not be the best to do. For me, as long as you're maintaining six feet distance, you're out in public, uh, I probably wouldn't be wearing a mask. But going into Walmart or Lowe's or something like that, I definitely would. But if I'm just going with my wife and we're going for a walk down the street, I probably wouldn't. Because what happens anytime people are coming at each other, everybody's like, okay, get on the other side of the road. And they clear out. But let me know, are you wearing them when you go over walks? That's kind of where I put the line. If I'm out in my yard weeding, I'm not doing it. If I'm just out for a walk, or in an area where I'm not, you know, right on top of people, I probably wouldn't. Paul is, on the other hand, uh, definitely part of the things that a lot of people, you know, say. No, says, hey, I'm an American. I don't want to wear a mask. I'm not going to do it. You know, it's kind of one of those things. Uh, you know, if you're worried about, wear a mask. Um, you know, it's kind of one of those things. But should you be able to force somebody else to? My big thing is private companies have the right. You know, a lot of people talk about First Amendment rights. You know, if you're a private company, it's the you know the new no short or no shoes, no shirt rule, right? It's no shoes, no shirt, no mask. Going to be kind of the new thing on the sign. Um, so it should be interesting to see how that plays out. How do I judge what's true? Now, this is a very interesting one because the mask controversy has been very big on this. You got professionals that will say they're not needed, and you got professionals that say they very much are needed. So which one's telling you the truth? Now, no matter what topic it is, there's always two sides to an argument. Um, I always talk about this with news, you know, doom and gloom versus everything's gonna be okay. Doom and gloom gets a lot more traffic when you write stories, so you see a lot more people write stories about doom and gloom. On the flip side, you know, you got two opposing pair of theories. Should you or shouldn't you do something? My theory is always this, you should look at both sides. Too often in our world, it's very easy to say, hey, I believe this, I'm gonna tune out all other news and only focus on what I think is right. And what I always say is look at both sides, because often the truth is not one way or the other. There's often legitimate points of view on both sides of the argument, and the truth is somewhere in the middle. Now the question is, is the truth more on one side or more on the other side. 
And the only way you can determine that is if you actually do the research for yourself. Um, so I have full faith that people are intelligent people, that people can re do research, and people can come up with their own opinions. Uh, it's something that whenever I wrote stories, I always try to do that. You know, I wanted to treat people with the respect to give people as much information as possible and often let them come up with their own opinions. When I do reviews on this channel and others, sometimes people get on me, Luke, you didn't really tell me if this one's better than that. Sometimes it's, there is no case. You gotta say, hey, that kind of depends on your opinion. On the flip side, you know, I trust you to come up with an opinion for or a decision for what's best for you. So that's my thought pattern. How do you come up with what is really right or wrong? You really gotta look at both sides of an argument and do your own research. And when you do that, when you really take the time to sit down and say, I'm gonna look at this side of an argument, I'm gonna look at that side of an argument, then you can make an informed decision and decide what's right for you. Rad um, Command, what announcement is that? Uh, did I miss it? Or are you talking about like an announcement about this? I haven't really talked much, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Quick question, what live TV service do you use now? Um, actually, right now, none. Uh, but come football season, if we get football season, I'll probably re-add it. All right. Um, NYC says if Barry goes outside since he's vulnerable. Yeah, that's one of the other things, too, is if you're vulnerable, definitely take your own time. Uh, for instance, when I went up to Michigan, we self-isolated. Uh, love to have seen my grandmothers. They're both alive, both in their like 80s. Uh, but definitely didn't want to risk to expose them, you know, while we were very careful, while we really didn't go into anywhere. And we had hand sanitizer and face masks and disinfectant wipes. And before we went to the hotel room, I re-cleaned everything before my, the kids and the wife came in and stuff. But we're also like, hey, you know, we were going to be careful and not make a decision to go in there or go, you know, hug gra grandmas until we had enough time had passed that we felt safe that we weren't going to give them something on, you know, for example. So keep that in mind. Um, so use your own judgment. If you are in a, in a vulnerable place, definitely be more cautious. Take that seriously. All right. Um, a couple of things. I would, I would love to know. I would love to do more of a talk show style where we can take um, your thoughts, your opinions on different topics, read them. I'm working on getting an email set up here for the show where I love to get a suggestions. If you ever have a story, if you ever find a story that you want me to cover, send me a tweet right now, Luke BK on Twitter, at Luke BK, twitter.com slash Luke, L-U-K-E, and the letter B and the letter K. And um, then on the flip side, um, we, you know, would you be open to maybe a call in? Maybe we, you submit maybe pre-recorded. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Solid Verbal podcast, and they often they have a uh, listener voicemail where people can call in and leave voicemail messages, and then they edit them together and they play some of them. You know, if we maybe put up a topic, maybe a tweet it out, you can leave me comments, I can read them, maybe submit audio clips. Would you be interested in having a bigger two-way conversation, maybe work up someday to having phone call kind of situations, talk about something where I'm talking to you we're reading it but then also be able to uh, get you to submit feedback there let me know I'll love to hear from you um if I wanted to go over would we uh no I I actually just told him like hey we'll have to catch up with you in a couple weeks when we get back um I both of them are fine with the idea that uh, I'll see you in a couple weeks so um but would I you know if they said hey we really want you to come over would I probably not not after driving, you know, cross country and stopping at multiple hotels and restaurants and bathrooms and stuff. Uh, well, you know, I had no signs and, you know, we practice social distancing. We're very careful, uh, especially one of my grandmother's health is very poor. Did not want to put myself in a position where um, I may uh, negatively spread something. So, you know, I it's kind of one of those things. I often find it interesting when people talk about reopening as if, Everybody would just run out there at crazy. And there are times where, you know, you as an individual person have to um, 
act responsibly. You have to make a decision to act responsibly in how you do stuff. And that was me making a decision that it was probably not a good idea for me to go see my grandmothers and hug them. Um, when, especially when I uh, just drove cross country with everything happening. So keep that in mind. So I don't know, you know what do you think? Overly cautious? I don't think so, um, but that's me. Hey, real quick, I know most people won't see this, but I'm gonna play a quick 15 second ad. Why? Because I help support the channel. And for everybody else who's not seen the ad, if you're new here, do me a big favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up, it really does help us. Hopefully we can help you find some new stories, which are stories you haven't heard before, which we got another one coming up right now. Hey Tom, I hope you have a great one. All right, so we're gonna wait for everybody to come back real quick and then we'll dive into the next story because this may be the perfect job for people. Uh, we'll see this. Okay, welcome back everybody. Great to have you all back here. But are you looking for work? Are you out of a job? I got a job that may be the best job out there possible for a lot of people. I think my wife would love this job. Right now you can get paid to sleep and test out different beds from the comfort of your home. A luxury homeware brand are looking for to pay people to test out their beds where they will send you the bed to your home you test it up, you fill out a report, and you um, submit it, where you tell them uh, what you think of the bed. There are actually whole YouTube channels dedicated to mat uh, mattress reviews and different things, uh, which I find interesting. There's a YouTube channel for everything, it seems like. But would you take a job where you get to be paid to sleep on different beds and write reports on them? NYC says, I can see drive-in cinemas making a comeback. I agree, NYC, we're already seeing that. I've actually seen a lot of local theaters, including my local one here, set up outdoor makeshift drive-in movie theaters where they project the movie on the side of a building and everybody stays in the car. They have this thing where you can text them or call them for food and they'll deliver the food to your car to you, which I thought was really interesting. You had to pre-buy the ticket and put the ticket in your windshield and they scan it through the windshield, they're like, don't open your window. Um, but I thought that was very interesting, definitely seeing a return of um, driving movie theaters. I always thought driving movie theaters were great. I, I understood why they died. Um, they never quite fully went away. They were always that novelty. It was almost like a novelty, like you know, going back in time, going to a driving movie theater. Now though, it seems like we're going back to movie theaters, drive-ins, because People don't want to sit in a movie theater right next to somebody for six hours with them coughing and hacking. I'm trying to remember the last time I've been at one. It's been a while. Um, probably the one in May. I was at one one in Maine when I was working as a camp um, staff up there. We all went there on a day off to a movie. Bill says driving could use Bluetooth instead of FM radio. They could. Um, I bet they'll continue to use FM radio though because it's a lot easier, at least like for my parents and trying to ha explain to them how to connect their Bluetooth device. Um, but yeah, let me know, would you go back to a drive-in movie theater or would you not? I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. But a real huge thank you to everybody. Great turnout today, a lot of people. We're gonna continue to kind of excuse me, do a lot more of these. I'm very excited, I can't wait until we can actually move and do this regularly, where we'll have a set time and date where we can actually go live and chat about all these things. Richard, so um, Richard, were you also on the same ship that Bill was? I saw you were asking about that earlier, about getting a mask of that, or were you just hoping to get one for a different type of ship? Chris's drive-in movie theaters are better. Why, Chris? Why do you like them better? I'll say the seats are probably more comfortable, to be honest with you. Now, a lot of new movie theaters are pretty nice, uh, but I, I don't know. I the, the shine of movie theaters really wore off for me quite a few years ago. I would, you know, my wife likes it. I'll go to movies for her every now and then. I just, I can't say I'm ever going like, man, I can't wait to get to the movie theater. You know, going to the movie theater, it was important to me. I've never really been a huge movie person so maybe I'm the wrong person to ask about that 
But I'd love to know what you think. When will we move? In a couple weeks, we're going to be moving. And my sister says, says he has never been to a drive-in movie theater. However, my mom has been to one um, in India back uh, when she was growing up. Her concern, her concern is weather. That is one of the big things is, you know, poor weather affects your experience where if you're in a traditional movie theater, it's not there. The thing I find interesting is, will movie theaters survive all this? It'll be interesting. Never been to a drive-in movie theater. Here's another one. Vincent says, never been in to go that way. Bill says he doesn't have a car and uses public transportation. That's a growing trend, especially in larger cities of people not owning cars and just taking public transportation. So let me know. And a special thank you to everybody who's here. A lot of new faces I'm seeing. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. Our goal here is to find news content you may not have heard about. Kind of give a quick breakdown. We Right now we're doing them weekly, but very soon once the move is complete, we'll be multiple times a week, uh, pre-recorded 10, 15 minute shows where we break down some of the biggest topics that you may not have heard about happening around the world. So let me know. Bill said, brought up Amazon buying JC Pennings earlier. I didn't get back to it. So let's get back to that conversation real quick. JC Pennings declared bankruptcy. Amazon wants to expand the clothing lineup. And they're looking at buying all or part of JC Pennings, which may not necessarily mean buying the stores, could just be buying the brands um, to expand their clothing lineup. What do you think of Amazon buying JC Pennings? PC Doctor asks, how's it going? Have you moved yet? Nope, haven't moved yet. A couple more weeks. We went up, dropped off the cat, dropped off the kid, um, unpacked a whole bunch of stuff, checked on the construction of the home, had to make some decisions about the construction of the home, and then um, moved, drove back here. A couple more weeks, do all the packing, meet the movers, clean the carpets on our way out, and prep it for the sale. So we're going to be up there in June. And by the end of June, I hope to be in the new YouTube studio. All right, so let me know, what do you think of Amazon buying um, JCPenney's for clothing? You know, one of, the, one of the weird swag things I just noticed while I was playing with right here, this is a stress ball from the channel Comet. Let's see here. There we go. I, I kind of completely forgot I had this sitting here, but I was going through a bunch of the swag things I found, and I found a ton of Comet brand swag. I pretty much, I think I have a t-shirt from pretty much every major streaming service or some type of swag out there from everyone. On uh, Chris's, he hasn't been going to a theater in a long time. The price of renting a movie at home is cheaper. Also, you can choose your own snacks. You know, the price of movie theaters have definitely taken them away from the, I'm just going to go to a movie a couple times a week to it becoming a big moment. You know, uh, movie different services try to change that, but I do think that's an important part there. Uh, Richard said he was not on the Yellowstone. He was on the Robert E. Uh, Perry and uh, William H. Stanley, a few others. And the Mercy Hospital ship, O'Brien, uh, Adrian, how many years did you serve, Richard? I asked my wife's coming up on her retirement date in very soon. So it looks like you served for a good amount of time. Did you retire or not? Let me know. Um, Bill says he thinks that Amazon's going to do the same thing with J.C. JCPenney's that they did with Whole Foods. Possible, but I think Whole Foods Whole Foods was a much it was a successful business when they bought it. J.C. Pings is not so much right now. It'll be interesting. Bill says he served for five years in the Navy. Thank you for your service, Bill. All right. So we'll keep everything going. Richard says was in for 21 years um, and 13 years of that at sea. Yeah, it's quite amazing. I had a brother-in-law. I have a brother-in-law who served in the Air Force or in the Navy. He definitely spent a lot of time out at sea. So 
it's one of the, you know the army like my wife you may go on a deployment every few years or the navy you're just always out there which is definitely very hard on families so my hat off to you to do that for 21 years huge respect to you and thank you for your service Chris, I just saw your tweet. Here's the world's largest jigsaw puzzle. Would you guys do this? 1,000, or excuse me, 51,300 pieces for the world's largest jigsaw puzzle. I think we talked about this a couple months ago, but let me bring this one up. Any jigsaw puzzle people out here, would you go out there and do this 51,000 plus piece puzzle? What's the difference between Amazon Fresh and Amazon Pantry? Amazon Pantry is a delivery service. I think with Amazon Fresh, you have to actually live. It's more like a grocery store service with same day delivery and that kind of stuff. I don't live in an Amazon Fresh market, but that's the difference. Pantry is available wherever they ship. Fresh is only available in select markets because they will also do cold items. Pro tip though, if you ever go to Disney World, Amazon Fresh, I think it's Fresh, will deliver to your hotel, to Disney. So when we get to Disney, we always go on Amazon, order a case of water and different things and have them deliver it to our hotel. The bellhops bring it right to your room. And the great thing about that is we get our snacks, we get our waters, all kinds of different stuff delivered. It's a whole lot cheaper than buying them at Disney World store, um, stores in the hotel or at different places. Oh, let me flip this back. I forgot to put my camera back. Um, so Amazon Fresh is a great way to save money if you're going to Disney and you don't want to pay Disney prices on water. Basically for the price of a bottled water at Disney, I got an entire case of water uh, from Amazon, plus snacks and different things. Of course, you can pack if you're driving this one way. We always fly, we always try to fly a little light because we want to leave room for souvenirs. You want to bring stuff back when you go to Disney World. So there are. Question everybody, uh, Universal is reopening next month or they want to, they've requested permission to reopen early June. Well, are you prepared and ready to go back to places like Disney World or Universal? If they, you know, I'm assuming they take reasonable precautions, they're gonna do all that. Or are you just not ready to head back to Amazon um, or head back to Amazon, head back to places like Disney and Universal? Let me know um, if you think you're just not quite ready for that or if you are, if you're very excited to go out there. Uh, Bill says Amazon Fresh is available in Austin, Texas. Yeah, unfortunately it's not available where I live and hopefully they keep rolling it out to new places. But um, Amazon Pantry is back when my wife and I were very busy we use that every now, and, every now and then to get items delivered to us when we're both working full time and everything. NYC says he is not ready. Save his money and go. You know, one of the things I see a lot of people talking about is the idea that, hey, I wanna go back to Disney right now because they hope that a lot of other people wouldn't and maybe there wouldn't be long lines at Disney World. If you've ever been to Disney World, you can know, there, especially if you go around like spring break or Christmas at different times, the wait times can be absolutely unbelievable. So I think I've heard people actually excited to rush back because they hope the lines won't be so bad. Richard says he hasn't been to a Universal Studios in 29 years. Richard, where, which one did you go to? I'm trying to remember 30 years ago, I think the only Universal Studios was in Orlando, or not Orlando, was it in California? I don't know. Have I seen NBC Nightly News Kids Edition? No, I have not, but apparently it's on YouTube. I'll check it out. See my daughter likes it. I live in NY, far away from Orlando and Anaheim. In LA, Richard, yeah, I don't think the Orlando um, Universal was open until the 90s, was it? I don't know, don't count me on that. They had to submit opening plans to the state and that's why it's showing now. That is correct, Deborah. We'll see if they actually get them approved. The plan, they definitely have been very aggressive. Or um, Universal, for example, sent out emails to a lot of their regular guests, their season pass holders and more. It was a questionnaire like, hey, what kind of um, things would you um, 
be willing to put up with if it may if we were to reopen things like for instance uh, you had to prepay for parking you wouldn't be able to pay at the tolls It, NYC, yep, a lot of um, amusement parks like Disney World do have deals with the states and stuff to give local residents cheaper rates to build. And it's also part of bi um, building goodwill with the locals. You want the locals to support Disney World and Universal and other places. If you charge them crazy amounts of money, they're probably not going to be too interested in it. Um, I think it was in Orlando for a long time. They had a campaign. It was like, have you hugged a tourist lately? It was this idea, and they talked about how tourists, because they spend so much money there at the hotels and stuff with taxes, keep the taxes lower on other people uh, who actually live there. So if you weren't for all the uh, people out there uh, traveling to Disney World, your taxes for your property taxes, for example, may be higher. Lots of uh, amusement parks do have annual passes. I won't lie. My wife and I did talk about the idea of like, hey, it's not moving back by family. What happens if we just move to Disney, live by Disney World, get season passes, and go there all the time? So that was very tempting. Uh, Richard says, last time he went to Disneyland, um, he was able to get in for free with Sean Melter passes. They definitely don't do that anymore, though they may have a day or two. But if you have a military ID and you go to a ticket office, we've done this, um, an outpost ticket office, you can get discounted tickets. Um, it's not half the price, but it's cheaper than a traditional ticket. The only downside, you can either buy them at three-day pa passes or five-day passes. Um, took the kids. We went for seven days where it was six days at the parks and then travel. And we didn't realize that basically we had to buy a five-day pass plus a one-day pass. And that additional one-day pass was almost as much as the five-day pass. It was crazy. So you can still get discounts, but I don't believe it's free anymore. Though I've heard, I think it was Universal may um, have some better deals than Disney when it comes to military discounts. So I think we're going to wrap this up. Thank you to everybody here. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. Um, and we are going to continue to try to grow the channel slowly but steadily. Do more breakdowns. We'll probably have one more of these live shows in this office. And that will be the final live YouTube video in this home office here. As we prepare to head up to the new house with the new studio, which I'm crazy excited about. Better sound, hopefully better lighting and a better setup for me to kind of interact with you. So, um, yeah, thank you everybody for hanging out. Let me know, uh, is there, before we go, any type, uh, any time of the day or week you would like to see these um, more often done? Leave me a comment, let me know, I'd love to hear from you. Bill says, Sam Club sells tickets. Yeah, I think um, you can also get, uh, Discounted though, it's not a huge discount. You can get like five dollars off a hundred dollar gift card to Disney if you buy the gift cards there. How long has it been since I shoveled snow? Well, last year when visiting family, I did a little bit, but happen to do it all the time. It's been a while. Snow is one of the reasons why I wasn't all that excited to move back to Michigan. Will there be another cross country vlog? Would you guys like to see another one of those cross country vlogs? Would you like to see more vlogs like that in general? Did you like that? Um, vlog I did of driving cross country something I haven't really done you know it's kind of one of those things you kind of have to learn it a little bit and um, you know the more we do it the better we'll get let me know would you like to see more like that Chris says Thursday 8 p.m. Eastern works for him CJ enjoyed the vlog thank you CJ yeah it's just kind of with everything happening in the world drive cross country I don't think a lot of people were doing it right now so we definitely wanted to do it Thanks, NYC. Appreciate the feedback. I'll have to get myself a snowblower. Maybe. My dad growing up always said, we're never getting a snowblower. This is good exercise. We need the exercise. And I've always did that. When I lived up there, I always just had a, a shovel. Uh, maybe when I get a little older. We'll see. So, and Bill says there's a military travel club. is another option through the exchange online. 
Thank you, Deborah. Recommend Perkins. Yeah, you know, Grand Rapids, Michigan, all the Perkins closed. But back when my wife and I first got married, we lived right next to a Perkins. And that was our favorite breakfast spot. But unfortunately, it didn't last. It shut. Just one day out of the blue, they shut it down. And I heard it's one of those things, you know, where they just kind of came in and said, hey, guess what? Tomorrow morning, we're shutting down. Everybody's getting two-week severance package. That's it. Thanks, everybody. We wish you, we thank you for your employment. But I definitely love Perkins, Bill. It's pretty good. Big Boys, which you may know where you live. Maybe called Bob's Big Boys is a pretty good one, too. Um, there are still some Perkins. I think it was um, parts of Missouri I saw one. Perkins are still around here or there. Where I live now, there's no Perkins. Um, so, unfortunately, we won't be stopping there. All right, everybody. I hope you all have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you to everybody who joined us. We'll be back next week. Check back. I'll be doing more of the breakdown videos very soon, so make sure to ring that notification bell also. I hope you all have a fantastic day. I hope you all take care. I'll talk to you all real soon. Thanks for your support. It really means a lot to me.